From the Chicago Sun-Times newsroom, I'm Natasha Karecki, and this is Off Message, our weekly political talk show. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about Rahm's new proposal. Um, he had some testimony this week before a state committee. In addition, I'm proposing a new state law to allow police officers the same judgment to issue tickets instead of arresting those who possess small amounts of uh, cannabis marijuana. Why is he doing this now? Well, there's a couple of reasons why he's doing it. First of all, he's got an election looming, so he's veering to the left as quickly as he can on a number of issues, including now it would seem on uh, drug policies. But also it's a bargaining chip, I think. Um, this ongoing discussion he and the superintendent have had where they've been trying to push the legislators into getting tougher on gun crimes. And so even though he didn't explicitly link it the other day, that's been the greater context for why he's been pushing drug stuff. Is there a view that there is the political will to do this in Springfield? I don't think so. I mean, I think it sounds like people are open to the idea of drug stuff, or at least some of it. But I think that there's a lot of discomfort with this idea of lengthening sentences for gun crimes or for any crimes, because the prison system is already overcrowded as it is. But that has been his argument, you know, that that's part of the problem of why there's so much violence is that people have been let out too soon. And that if there were longer sentences, perhaps they wouldn't pull the trigger. And there's a lot of other folks who think that has, is not going to be the way it goes in reality. But this is all about image making. This is just the mayor getting ready. You know, I love his quote about saying, you know, I'm, you'll know when it's time for the re-election, not time for the re-election. Are you kidding me? You know, we found out last Friday he was out shaking hands at one of the L stops. I mean, he, he can't take it, you know, that the other guys are already out there trying to woo voters. So he's got to start on this thing. Well, and then he came out pretty strongly against what Karen Lewis said. Let's legalize marijuana and let's tax it. I do not think you should balance the budget by promoting recreational smoking of pot. As we say, he seems to be trying to move to the left to show himself to be more progressive, to appeal to progressives. But really, he's always got to stay to the right of Kieran Lewis. He's got to, he, he has to appeal to the people on the Northwest and Southwest sides who may not be comfortable with Kieran Lewis. And so he jumps out and says, well, he's not for revenue from uh, taxing marijuana. Even though the city of Chicago gets lots of revenue from taxing cigarettes, he was, you know, claiming credit for a reduction in cigarette use, I think, the other day, too. Using taxation is seen as a disincentive to the consumption of cigarettes. So let's face it, guys, people are smoking pot, you know. So if you're somebody saying, I'm against, you know, people smoking more pot, taxation would seemingly help that cause. And, you know, and as Karen Lewis brought up, $80 million in Colorado in the first quarter. I mean, the, there is a lot of money to be made here. I mean, do you honestly think that if Karen Lewis is elected mayor, if she runs, that she would legalize pot? Well, I don't think she'd be able to do it alone. It, it, perhaps she would try. You know, I certainly wouldn't put it past her, but I think she would need some kind of support to go further, further with that. I don't, I don't think this, you can do that. I don't know. Uh, I was going to uh, say, uh, I don't uh, think the city alone has to do it. Yeah. yeah. But would she try? Well, she could at least push the agenda. I mean, I think Karen Lewis pushing the legalization pot in some ways would be easier to accomplish than Rahm Emanuel pushing some sort of amorphous decriminalization of pot with, you know, the gun crimes thing, you know, looming in the background. And why else, you know, right now it's medical marijuana, but there's so much interest in that. I mean, folks see that as the door opening and they're not, they, of course they see that coming down the road. It was really tough for them to get that medical marijuana bill through and it's, a very restrictive law, and, it's and I mean temporary. the and the legislature. I mean, they're just not there yet. They, they, we're not where other states are on this issue. Yeah, but we're in such desperate financial straits. I think that the medic once the medical marijuana thing is implemented, assuming there's no major hiccups, you see it on the fully implemented for six months to a year. I think the legalization argument will pick up major momentum. So speaking of marijuana, medical marijuana, Bruce Rauner came out and said he would not have signed the medical marijuana bill. This week, though, he said that he was open to the discussion of decriminalizing. Is Rauner all over the place on this issue? Absolutely. Rauner's all over the place, it seems to me, on a lot of issues. I don't know if this is just rookie candidate, uh, someone who hasn't been out there a lot before. You know, it was an interesting week. Every single day he was out trying to read policy statements to the press. I thought, oh my goodness, who are they, who, who's advising this guy? This is the most boring stuff I've ever seen. Today, I'm releasing the next chapter in our comprehensive blueprint, blueprint. 
And then when you throw a couple questions at him, he had a hard time dealing with some of them if it weren't on that particular topic. I think a theme of, of the Bruce Rauner campaign is wanting to be all things to all people. He's not really out there often enough for us to drill down on any kind of issues to really force him out. And, and he's but, he so, ha, but he has been out. He has been out lately. more lately. But That was a week. I, I think he's back in the bunker a bit this week. But you even know, then, kind of back and but forth. even then, uh, uh, he was on his talking points and couldn't be budged, really, right? Like I tried the question. On, I tried the NFL issues. question. Found out, you know, and and this is the part that was very infuriating. They thought the Quinn people had fed me the question. I was so insulted. I was like, oh my goodness. Really, reading the blogs, there was uh, someone, and you know, sometimes the comments are interesting. And someone had written, "Why hasn't anyone asked Ronner about being a part owner of the Pittsburgh Steelers?" I was like, well, hmm, I didn't realize that. Did a little more research, found out, well, yeah, he is. Not only is he in part owner of the Steelers, the Boston Celtics, and the Chicago Bulls. Perhaps it's a small part, but he still is part owner. Right. So I thought, hey, there's a good question. The NFL is the topic. You know, it was so totally, I mean, he, he diverted my question. He wouldn't answer the question. And then it took them four hours to put out a statement. And it wasn't even his statement. It was his spokesman's statement about his statement. I mean, it was craziness. He may, he may be a part owner of your home, Marianne. I mean, part <laughs> of the problem is that he is, you know, his business dealings are so extensive. He's got ownership in all these different companies. And so... Um, I'm not saying you shouldn't be responsible for him. He should, but it's like these questions keep coming at him about various dealings ranging from the nursing homes to the Steelers to whatever, and he just totally seems unprepared for him. Well, and particularly this week, it seemed like the the media was really, you know, they were screaming at him. And He's failing. He is failing. Do you think that's a reflection of pent-up demand of wanting to get answers out of him? Do you think that's the media turning on him? I believe some media may have been promised some access that then they were denied that access. And so they thought, okay, you know what? If you say you're going to let me talk to him and, and have a discussion with him, I'll wait and I won't, you know, maybe perhaps put him on the spot in front of everyone. But then you don't provide that. So guess what? You put him out there in front of everybody, we're going to ask every question we can. You have to because you might not see him again. That's unfortunately the way the game's played. So just looking at another broader perspective the last two weeks, he's been leading for a long time and then it's shifted. We're seeing the Harold Washington ad. I would never appoint Pat Quinn to do anything. The same one that Dan Hines ran four years ago. Is that an indication of desperation or is it part of their strategy? I, well, I think it's probably both. I mean, they're throwing everything at him they can. They also had the Willie Horton-esque ad. Violent criminals secretly released early by Pat Quinn. At the press conferences this week, he essentially blamed Governor Quinn for the shooting of this nine-year-old. Um, I mean, it's just, you know, the, the campaigns are both getting pretty low, down and dirty here. And, and obviously, he's making some sort of an effort to get votes wherever he can, or at least make Quinn play defense on what's expected to be his own territory, like in the African-American community, in the Latino community. I think they're just going for it. They're pulling everything out that they have at this point, yeah. including including campaign ads that ran four years ago against Pat Quinn. I mean, clearly these are things they had in the can, and they, they seem to be just trying to see, you know, using the kitchen sink approach to figure out what will get them a little traction. I It's caught me by surprise. I, I didn't expect it to, you know, to turn at this phase. I figured, maybe a few weeks down the line. You know, I'm not home watching the TV. There just must be a lot more Quinn out, ads out there that are drawing blood than, than I realized. I know they've pulled the ad and I drive, I'm gonna drive this old van. My kids call it the rolling trash can. I, I don't know a little bit why, why aren't they taking the Bloomberg approach? Why not just say, guess what, I'm rich. I've, I've been rich and I'm, I'm successful and I'm gonna help make the state successful. Instead of this sort of phony, I'm gonna drive my old car. Well, they pulled that ad. But they haven't pulled others, you know, so. Well, we haven't seen the $18 watch one in quite a while. Right? <laughs> no. And he did, he did say the other day, I'm not going to apologize for my success, and I actually want this. I want to help make sure that everyone has this level of success. But it's just, you know, wasn't delivered with a whole lot of uh, conviction or passion. I mean, obviously, I, I believe that he's happy about his own success, but, <laughs> right, but the message that, didn't come Right. Through. Is that some of the, the, the issue, though, is, is that he depicts himself as, I wear this ugly plaid shirt, and this I think watch, that's and the I drive this van. The confusion of who is he, 
We don't quite know yet. Who is he? We, we kind of all know who Pat Quinn is, like him or lump him. I mean, you might be like, Oof, you know what? I, I'm, I'm tired of him. Why hasn't he done more? I get that. But then who is Bruce Rauner? And, you know, it does seem that there is so much focus on this race by the National Republican Party. They see blood in the water. They think they could get win this. They might may very well. But it's being run by them more than I, I think to me, than it is by sort of a local in uh, Illinois folks. I still think a lot of people have just tried not to pay attention, to be honest with you. Both, I mean, what I hear over and over from people, insofar as anyone cares about the campaign, is I don't like either of these guys, you know? And, and I know we hear that a lot at election time, but it really seems that's, that's the strongest feeling I'm hearing in this particular election over and over again. I, I think that that's, yeah, I think that's where we are. And it's not gonna get better in the yeah, next but month. But there will be more ads. You're just gonna have to make a decision, folks. Okay, with that, let's switch to quotes of the week. And Mark, why don't we start with you? I'm gonna love this city. That's uh, our new bishop, uh, Blaise Kuprich. Uh, and he seemed to be saying this after somebody had given him some Chicago Bears items. So if he's gonna base his relationship on the city with <laughs> its sports teams, you know, it might not go as well as he thinks. We're gonna need his counseling if that's the case. Um, mine was from Bruce Rauner's press conference with Chris Christie, which I just thought was just a wonderful moment. Our special guest is one of the greatest public servants in America today and one of the greatest governors in the United States. He's a role model for me and an inspiration for me and a friend of mine. This is Bruce Rauner talking about Chris Christie and of course, you know, right as he's blasting Pat Quinn for all for being under investigation his alleged ethical lapses and all this stuff and you know Chris Christie looking pleased as punch that no one's asking him about the bridge scandal at home so <laughs> no wonder he keeps coming in Illinois, exactly right? and and Mick and I did not speak about this beforehand but I had to go to a Chris Christie quote as well when he said the part about the two most important things that a governor can do was job growth and quote provide for the public safety which again was uh, tied to his own state. I mean, how could he stand there with a straight face and tell us that when he is facing all of these questions himself? Okay, I'm gonna shift to completely different. Um, Alderman uh, Munoz, we had some video of him patching up his own potholes in his ward because he said Rahm Emanuel and the city hall won't do it. He admits that it was a stump, but he thinks it's an effective one. And he says when his neighbors see him, they say it's about time. With that, thank you very much for joining us this week on Off Message, and thank you to our panel, and we will see you next week. Mm -hmm.